Hey guys, um, yeah, so uh, in a previous video or in a different video, I show you how to start uh, with n plus 1 points on a polynomial and then to determine that nth degree polynomial that contains those n plus 1 points on it. Uh, we're going to accomplish the same goal here, um, but this time um, we're going to use what's called a Vandermann matrix. Of course, the other way that I showed you is um, by using Lagrange polynomials, yeah? Cool. Now, um, just as Lagrange required, we need n plus 1 points to uh, interpolate the nth degree polynomial. Now, a polynomial can be written in standard form in this manner, yeah? Cool. Now, I took that standard form and I wrote it in matrix form in this way. Um, and um, since we're using what's called a Vandermond matrix, we'd want to write our polynomial in matrix form. Now, given this, um, I see that for each xi, p of xi is going to be the following in matrix form. It's going to be xi to the zeroth, and then xi to the first, you get it, dot, 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 xi to the nth. Um, and of course, for each i, this uh, row matrix that I just got done writing will be different, right? Um, but this column matrix that we multiply by, the coefficient is going to stay the same, um, regardless of the xi, right? So uh, the column matrix, uh, unfortunately, I'm unable to copy and paste, so I'll have to write it. The column matrix will have to be this matrix, right? We already have it um, just above, but as I said, I can't copy and paste it, so I'll have to redraw it. Uh, I'll rewrite it. And specifically, it's alpha 0, alpha 1, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, what an ugly alpha, alpha n. Yeah, cool. Um, now, notice that for each i, this is going to be 1. And uh, furthermore, after plugging in all of the i's, we can write all of them at once in a succinct uh, matrix form um, using an n, by, an, an n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix, our Vandermond matrix times uh, these this same coefficient matrix because that like I said um, like the coefficient matrix does not change so here um, notice that I could write 1 for x1 to the zeroth power and then uh, n the next entry to its right is going to be x1 to the first power and then next is going to be x1 to the second power, and you get it, dot, dot, dot. And the last entry is going to be x1 to the um, n plus 1 power, or no, to the nth power, right? Yes. And then next uh, row is going to be 1, and then x2 to the first, you get it, x2 to the second, dot, dot, dot x2 to the nth, right? And then column of 1's here, the first column, dot, dot, dot. We conclude on a 1. And then it's um, x. And then it's going to be n plus 1 to the first, x n plus 1 to the second, dot, 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 x n plus 1 to the nth. Yeah, notice that this is an n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix, and this is what we call the Vandermond matrix. So here it is. And um, notice that uh, for each i here, we're multiplying again by the same column matrix. So the coefficient matrix that we multiply by does not change. So we have this times uh, 
and it's gonna be alpha zero alpha one right alpha n at the end and this is going to equal well let's see what is p of xi since um xi yi is a point on uh, our polynomial p of xi better be yi for each i right so what um, I should have on the right side as a result of the Vandermond matrix times the coefficient matrix should be the yi's, namely um, y1, uh, y2, all the way through yn plus 1. Right? Okay. Okay, there we are. So uh, then this is done because what we're trying to solve for from the get-go where the coefficient, um, the coefficients of our polynomial. So what we're trying to solve for in this matrix equation is for the coefficient matrix, this column matrix. And uh, so long as our Vandermond matrix is non-singular, which is so long as it's invertible, then this is easy enough to solve, yeah? Cool, so this is it, take care.